Hello and welcome to another session of data sufficiency. In this session, we'll try to solve more examples and try to encompass many more different types of data sufficiency questions. What is the time on a certain watch? Now, simple straight question, what is the time on a watch? Let's have a look at the first statement. The minute hand is at 6. Now, the minute hand it has, is at 6 means what? It is 30 minutes. Past what? We don't know. It might be any number, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. It can be anything. So, first statement does not give me an answer. Let's look at the second statement. The hour hand is halfway between 9 and 10. Now, a lot of us will get confused here. Is it 9.30 or is it 9.35 or is it 9.45 or is it 9.15? Because it is between 9 and 10. But let's take the word halfway into account. Halfway means exactly in the middle. So, it has to be 9.30. Now, had that halfway not been there, then the confusion was genuine. But the halfway is there. Or instead of halfway, had it been exactly between 9 and 10? Or rather exactly halfway between 9 and 10? That would also mean the same. But halfway means 9.30. So we can, from the second statement, we can very clearly conclude that it is 9.30. Let's have a look at the next question. How much cake did the fourth man eat? Now, this is a logical question. Does it seem so? Let's have a look. The first statement. The first three men ate one-fourth, two-seventh and three-eleventh of the cake respectively. Now, generally people will start calculating. One-fourth, two-seventh plus three-eleventh. So, this will give me this. One minus the sum should give me how much the fourth man ate. But, are we anywhere given that there were four men? It's just asking me how much did the fourth man eat? Or did he waste anything? No. So, there is no clue about how many people were there. Was there any wastage or not? So, the first statement technically cannot conclude. So, let's look at the second statement. Together, the four men ate the whole cake. Now, I have both the confusions answered. If we take the first statement. The second statement alone does not give me anything because four men ate the whole cake. So, I cannot distribute. I don't know if it is one half of it or one fourth of it or how they ate it. So, second statement alone is out. But taking both of them together, the second statement answers my confusion that yes, there was no wastage and there were four people who had the entire cake. So, both these statements together are able to answer my question. Let's have a look at a different type of question. Is k an integer? Now, simple question, is k an integer? Now, what are integers? Integers are nothing but minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. So, any number which does not have decimal, be it positive or negative, is an integer. Let's look at the first statement. k plus 6 is an integer. Now, if k plus 6 is an integer, if I remove the 6, integer minus integer is what? Integer. It cannot be a decimal point. So, k has to be an integer. So, from the first statement, it is clear that yes, k is an integer. Let us look at the second statement. 3k plus 7 is an integer. Now, if I break it into two parts, first let us remove the 7. So, integer minus integer will give me an integer. So, 3k is an integer. So, that is what I can conclude. But 3k, can k can also be what? 1 by 3, k can be 2 by 3 or any other number. So, that 3k becomes an integer. So, 3k is an integer, cannot conclude that k is an integer. So, the second statement is not sufficient. Hence, the first statement alone is able to answer the question, but the second statement is not. Let us have a look at a different type of question even more. Is q an integer? Again, integer, same concept applies, but let us look at the options. First statement, p plus q is an even integer. Now, p plus q is an even integer odd plus odd is even, even plus even is even. So, p and q both can be odd and p and q both can be even. But can p and q be 1.5 plus 1.5? Yes, that is possible or rather sorry 1.5 plus 2.5 because 1.5 and 1.5 will give me 3 which is not even but 1.5 and 2.5 will give me 4. 1.2 and 2.8 that will also give me 4. So, p and q 
are need not be necessarily integers they can be anything right let's look at the second statement p minus q is an even integer so p minus q again even minus even is even odd minus odd is also even so p minus q both can be even both can be odd or <coughs> p and q both can be decimals also like 3.5 and 1.5 so 3.5 and 1.5 will give me 2 so from the second statement also i am not able to get the clear answer let's have a look when we take both of them together so p plus q is even and p minus q is even when is this possible if i say let's take the decimal case if p plus q is even then and at the same time p minus q is even then it has to be 0.5s only because if it is 1.2 and 1.8 or 1.2 and 2.8 the difference will not be an integer so it has to be 0.5s so it can be 1.5 and 2.5 1.5 and 4.5 uh, why because it has to be even totally so one number should be odd and one number should be even with a 0.5 in, attached to it then only the sum will be even but if you look at the difference 1.5 and 2.5 the difference will be odd so the first statement with a decimal does not conclude in the same way that the second statement so it cannot be 0.5 as well so if i take first and second together it has to be either both of them even or both of them odd because decimals do not satisfy both the conditions together so both the conditions together we can conclude that yes q is an integer but not individually and we have to be very careful about it but this is a very very tricky question let's have a look at another question k is greater than 100 is it a prime number now let's go back to the basics what are prime numbers any number which has exactly two divisors one is itself and one is the number one so in order to prove that a number is prime number we'll have to check by all the prime numbers less than 8 let's no let's not get into that and let's get into the statements the first statement when k is divided by 16 the remainder is 6 so can i write k as <coughs> 16x plus 6 which can also be written as 2 common 8x plus 3 now k is a multiple of 2 here hence it is not a prime number so from the first statement i can conclude that k is not a prime number but hold on let's look at the second statement also second statement says 7k is not a prime number now 7k by itself 7 into k so it will not have exactly two divisors or factors it will have more than two factors so 7k cannot be a prime number but it does not say anything about k now k might be 6 also k might be 2 also or if k is greater than 100 it can be 101 also so i don't know about it so second statement is not concluding into anything whereas the first statement is able to conclude that k is not a prime number so by using such examples that we've just solved we can clearly identify the catch points for data sufficiency but at the same time we need to be careful and brush up our basics about each and every topic because data sufficiency can relate to quantitative also and can relate to logic also so we'll have to do it only by practice practice is the only key to success in data sufficiency so all the best